This podcast is brought to you by lineupmedia.fm. Hey listeners, Eric Apple from American Animals, and today's podcast is brought to you by Amazon. It's really easy to support American Animals. Before you shop at Amazon, and we know you all do it, go to our website. That's the number two, AmericanAnimals.com, and click on the Amazon banner on the homepage. It's that easy. Remember, that's two, AmericanAnimals.com, and click the Amazon banner before you shop. You know what they say about one bad apple. Well, we've got two. Gather round, boys and girls, and get ready for a different kind of story time. It's American Animals. All your favorite athletes, entertainers, and weirdos are coming to you like you've never heard them before. It's uncensored. It's not safe for work. It's a goddamn zoo. From the OC to oh shit. Join Eric, Bad, Apple, and Ian, Uncle Creepy, McCall. Get some. Well, we are back, Ian. American Animals. Yes, we are. Eric Apple hanging out with Ian McCall here. What up, in, guys? In uh, Hollywood, California, getting ready for our, our show. And we're excited this week. We got a, another good guest. We've had some pretty good guests so far. Our guests don't suck, that's for sure. I mean, for a show that's just starting out, we've had you know people with literally millions and millions of and millions of followers, and that's a that's a pretty big deal. We have some cool friends. We haven't had any nobodies on the show yet, that's for sure. Well, yeah, we haven't actually. You know, everyone has at least some sort of substance in their life. That's always nice to talk about. Yeah, I guess so. So what? So what's going on? Uh, we're we're back and we're ready to rock this week. But before we get to the show, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what's going on in your life this week, buddy. So this week, I'm just you know was training, of course, because I'm in fight camp. Um, I went from there to here, and now I go to Vegas tomorrow for a charity event. I obviously, still have to train, but you know. Uh, World Series of Poker's in town in Vegas for the next, what, two months? So I've got to go out there, do a charity poker tournament, take everyone's money. Uh, I keep saying take the money. Apparently there's no money Do you get to keep any of it? Uh, I'm just going to tell myself I do. Is it is it one of those charity poker tournaments where the money you get's not real, so it doesn't matter? Or is it a, a tournament where you get real money, but then at the end you're supposed to give it back to them? Everyone keeps telling me there's no money, or at least she does. But I'm I'm going to, I'm taking someone's lunch money. So I've only played in one poker tournament in my life. Or no, I'm sorry, two. But the very first one I played in, it was a benefit for Chris Ackerman. You remember Chris? Yes. And I made the final table out of like 100 people. And I had no <laughs> idea what I was doing. And all I was doing was just being like real conservative and cautious. I mean, I, ha- I had a good amount of chips. But I mean, I didn't have nearly as many as the big boys. But I just like outlasted people and made it to the final table that way. And I was. No, I, no. <laughs> I was, And I won like a couple hundred bucks. And I had to give it all away. But that's, I guess that's the whole point, right? Damn it, benefits. You know, yeah. it, this is the close to 10th year it's been going, correct? And a lot of a lot of, a lot of celebrities go out there. A lot of uh, people are going to be in town anyways. There's the the EDC. The EDC. Oh, God. God. And I, I get anxiety just thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. And then the World Series of Poker in town and me coming to town. I haven't been there in over like a year and a half. So I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm a little nervous to go to Las Vegas, but then again, I'm in fight camp, so I shouldn't do anything too bad. So you haven't been to Vegas at all for a year and a half? No. So, since I got my ass kicked there last time, I haven't been back. Really? Yes. Wow. I don't I don't know what to say. I just don't like Vegas. I don't. If I want to do horrible shit, I'm going to do it at home on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> like, I why, do- why do I want to leave paradise to go to the desert? It's just different horrible stuff, I suppose. Yeah, you know? Not really. So I went to Splash House this last weekend. What's that? Do you know what Splash House is? Down in San Diego? No, Splash House is in Palm Springs. It's at the uh, Segura Hotel and the Riviera Hotel. So it's basically I'm like- i the Wave House. Yeah, you're thinking of Wave House. So it's like a mini music festival. They have two venues and they have like a different DJ every hour from like noon till nine o'clock. Right there, I'm out. I mean, I, I, had, <laughs> I, had, I had a good time. I'm sure you did. It was legit. As you pull your phone out, oh, what do you got? Show no, no, no. I'm just, I, I, I was gonna, just going to tell you about uh, who some of the DJs were, but I, I had a pretty good time. Well, you know, going to listen to live music anywhere is a good time. Um, you know, and Palm Springs doesn't suck as a place. I just, I, I like the beach. You know, it, it, it wasn't too hot. It was only like 90 degrees the first day and like 95 the second. But for June in Palm Springs, that's like not bad. And I'm guessing there's a pool because it's called the Splash House? Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. I got something right. So, so yeah, I had a good time. And we stayed out there. The hotel we stayed at kind of sucked. 
Which one? Uh, we got a hotel called Avalon that is supposed to be like one of those little bougie, like small, boutique cool boutique hotels. And I knew what it was going to be, and I was right. It was it, it was an old shitty hotel that they put a paint job on, and it sucked. And some 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 shitty furniture that looks old. It was dark. It was it was just it was it was definitely disappointing. But uh, we got to see. I got to see Odessa. Odessa is a pretty big, yeah. uh, pretty good group of DJs. They're real good. And uh, it's funny because I, I ended up meeting a whole bunch of the guys who run who run it, and uh, a bunch of the guys who were hosts and stuff. And we had a bunch of friends in common. They were hanging out with us, um, and they gave us a table the the second day, like a cabana table bed thingy, and they only charged tra- us for one bottle. <laughs> So other people are paying like twenty five hundred bucks, three grand. And we paid like four hundred dollars. I mean, how many people were there? Was it a big, big, big event? Yeah, probably a couple thousand at each venue. That's not bad. Sounds like a good time to me. I seen a lot of horrors that I knew. Yep. We were there about three minutes, and ran into a couple of girls that I had already dated been inside you, been inside you, <laughs> been inside you. Yeah, it's just motion, just motion, just motion. So yeah, I was standard, you know, it was standard. <laughs> you know, it, there's only so much you can do. It's not your fault. You know, I mean, I would be selfish if I just kept it all to myself. Yeah, you, you, that's why you should give it to your friends now that you're done. So I, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. You going to Vegas, Ian? How long are you going to be in Vegas? It's for charity, and she's going to be babysitting <sighs> me. So, I mean, how, where are you going to train? When are you going to train? How, how often? Now, are you now, train? now that I'm 10th planet. I know my, my coach Casey Halstead will be out there. So I'll be training 10th planet Jiu Jitsu out with him. I'll probably go to hybrid performance to kickbox or hit mitts and just, I'll just do that. So is, uh, your former coach Jiva Santana, not at Oyama's anymore? No. Jiva left. I'm the oldest kid in a, in a divorce. So Jiva sits <laughs> me down, you know, and kind of this look on his face. He's like, well, listen, you know, me and me and coach are, we're splitting up. <laughs> I'm like, Hey, what mom? What? <laughs> <laughs> you're leaving dad what the fuck man what am i gonna do and then um and then everyone looked at me like oh well step it up it's your turn to fucking shine and be a coach and apparently that's worked out so now you know jiva jiva left i still see him every once in a while i don't see him enough but you know i'm just i spend so much time at my gym specifically coaching and training that i don't have i don't have time to go train with him really so did you guys actively go out and search for new grappling coaches and new grappling yes. program or was it already ready to go? We redid the whole thing, brought in Marcel Lozado, um, who is, you know, Marcel's a 10 time world champion. He's taught a lot of champions. It just didn't, it didn't work well. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to say anything bad, but it just didn't work out. So we had to get rid of him. And then we brought in 10th planet and, and yes, we're, I'm, I'm used to very strict Brazilians. That's why I'm still only a purple belt. Yep. I've been a purple belt forever. I think I'm just a purple belt. Because I don't put a gi on ever, because I should. I've, I, have you ever worn a gi? Yeah. Do you like it at all? No. I fucking hate it. I don't like wearing a gi. I, I, I literally will get angry and frustrated and f- freak out in minutes. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, I, ha- I should be doing it more, but again, now that 10th Planet's there, I, I don't ever do it anyways. But the 10th Planet guys came in, and I, I've been friends with Eddie forever. My brother used to train at the at Eddie's yep. spot. The vibe since they came in has been so nice. They're all a bunch of nerdy, happy, go lucky, super jiu jitsu guys who just all they want to do is train and talk about uh, like comic books or uh, the Pokemon. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Man. So it, I mean, it's kind of it's scary to think all these like super nerds who are that tough, who know, who know how to choke you and hurt you. I walk around my gym all the time and I look at our kickboxers, which, you know, good Muay Thai guys are fucking bean poles. Yeah. And like this one guy, Raj, his name is Raj Patal. So the most Indian name you can get. And he walks around at 130 pounds and he's 5'7". And he's just all bone. And I just, he just fucking crushes people. So is he basically a living uh, version of Dalsim from yes, Street Fighter? That's exactly what we call him. Did you know him. I was going to say that? Yes. Because we, we like to, to remind him daily that he looks like <laughs> We have another kid who's the same kind of thing, fights for glory. Tall, skinny, like super nice, go lucky. But he'll kick you in the face. That's for now, sure. How high level do you think the guys in glory are? Do you, I mean, do you think like you and I could do like a prelim in glory? No problem. <clears throat> um, I think so. But then again, when I, this is how I look at it. I would do lion fights because I would fight an American and we know most of those guys. Yep. But, oh man, I, I don't know about fighting some random Dutch, little tiny Dutch guy or little Thai guy. Fuck that noise. Those guys will fucking rack me. Elbows and knees hurt. 
Well, it's not, you know, it's funny because everyone thinks MMA is like so scary, but it's, I mean, honestly, like I feel like I would have more shit hurt after a Muay Thai fight. You, you fucking stand in front of another man and just take turns kicking and punching each other. There's, there's no really in between space and, and you can elbow, I guess it depends if it's glory or, or full Muay Thai rules like lion fight. But if, if there's any people out there that are looking to watch exciting shit, go look up lion fights or go look up WCK, you know, Muay Thai or yeah. go look up glory. That is excitement. You know, I saw some WCK fights, I don't know, two months ago on TV and they were absolutely miserable. The, the level of guys was horrible. It's funny how much MMA has affected the level of kickboxing in America. <laughs> like everybody that would have been a kickboxer is like over it and doing MMA now. Well, so, so kickboxing in Muay Thai in America has definitely suffered. There's, there's less money in Muay Thai than there is in MMA and there isn't shit in MMA. <laughs> exactly. Some guy made like 1200 bucks a couple weeks ago for fighting in Bellator. Wow. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> I'm guessing you came out in the uh, in the the green here, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, guess what? Uh, we got our opening se- uh, opening segment all done. What we up, have guys? our guest here today, and it is none other than adult film superstar and Hall of Famer Taylor Wayne. Taylor, welcome to uh, American Animals. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi. Here we- <laughs> it's already started. I know that voice. Yeah, no, I've already finished. <laughs> oh, okay. Geez. I took one look at you, and then I saw his. Cute little mustache mm. that he probably plays. I thought you'd be desensitized by now, but I guess you're still into <laughs> oh, it, huh? Oh, God, no. I mean, you, you don't do what I did for, or do for this many years and not like what you do. Well, Unless there you go. you're heavily into drugs, which apparently I'm not. Uh, uh, but, a, but a lot of adult film stars are, apparently. A, a lot what of if, people what if you like both? in general are <laughs> yeah. into drugs. You could be anybody. You could be on Wall Street and be like screwed up on coke or whatever, meth. I don't know. I, I saw that movie. I loved Wall Street. It was on last night. It was on, that's why I... I, grab lo- the loot. I don't want to die sober. I love Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Everything said, about that movie. Do you want to die sober? Yes. <laughs> I kind of, I could agree with that. Who wants to die yeah. sober? That sucks. So let's talk, let's go down. <laughs> let, let, let's check out Taylor Wayne's bio real quick. Uh, Taylor, you were an, an AVN Hall of Fame inductee in 2005, a Legends of Erotica Hall of Fame uh, inductee in 2007. You've starred in over 288 adult films. You were the Penthouse Pet of the Month. In the past, um, you've been doing adult since 1989. You've also written and produced adult films. Um, of course, you know we, we've we know you've involved with the Spice Radio and Playboy Radio before. So, man, it seems like you covered all the angles here in the adult world. I've actually, and that's only a slither of all. The, I'm in three Hall of Fames. I mean, fames, yeah. By the way. I mean, we could do. I'm in three Hall of Fames. So by the time they put me in the last one, I was like, I guess that's like time out. That's like get I the win. fuck out. Get the fuck out. Like, it's done. We, we're not even going to create another Hall of Fame to give you the message. Get out. Like, uh, it, <laughs> did you ever have like a, like, a, like a moment where you're just like, man, like if somebody would have told me when I was 15 years old that I was going to be in three different adult film Hall of Fames, I would be like, what the fuck I, are you talking I about? I could have guessed that. I was already, you know, given oral sex at 12. So, I, you know, it was. Oh, geez. It was paid. No. But um, no, I didn't. Know. I was in Newcastle then. There wasn't even wasn't even porn in England back then. I mean, there really wasn't adult. Adult really only started to happen in England. Uh, I'm gonna say ten years ago, just for sake of argument. But when I lived in England in 1980, 1988, um, there was no adult films. Is there much of a? I mean, I have no. I mean, I have no idea. Is there much of a for. adult? Is there much of an Sorry. adult industry going on in England now? I mean, are there multiple production companies? A lot going on there. It's not like America. I, I can't imagine. It's not, and people don't view adult the same way in Europe as they do in this country. Like literally, people are just uh, loose as a goose over there. They go out. They want to have sex with you. You just have sex with people. They don't get all caught up in this porn thing, you know, where everybody's pretending that they're virgins and angels and, oh, I don't really like sex. I'm going to wait till I get married. They're like, fuck that. You're hot. Do you want to fuck? Okay. So And that's it. So, so <laughs> Adele didn't, didn't have the same mystique as it did here because, you know, nobody was- It wasn't as taboo. Up. Yeah. Nobody was, but you know, like pent up about sex. In England, people will just sit there and talk about sex and talk about anal and talk about anything, and it's not shocking. When I first came over here in 1989, and it was kind of interesting because I've always been a very vocal person, and I like to, I'm very expressive, 
and you may know this about me, Eric, a little bit, but I really like to talk dirty. In fact, I remember... Uh, I think he I knows remember, the ins and outs. I remember one of the directors, this is in the early 90s, it was Anthony Spinelli, one of the old New York guys that did porn back then. Uh -huh. And he said to me after a scene, I was doing a girl-girl scene, he said, a blind man could watch you, uh, could hear you having sex and know exactly what's going on and still come because the entire time the sex is going on, I'm pretty much doing a, you know, you're, a dialogue you're, you're, you're of gi everything. You're giving a play-by-play. Yeah. -play. Oh, my God. I love how you lick my pussy. It's making me so fucking wet. Your tits are so nice. Let me squeeze your tits. It's so funny because just, I'm so desensitized. Yeah. I, I need talking. Yeah. <laughs> I could be with the hottest girl in the world, and if she's silent, I'm not into it. Really? If you, Seriously. You yeah. just, you have to just tell me. Just tell me you want me to come because it'll happen. Otherwise, I'm just fucking over here like... Mm -hmm. just, tell me what to, just tell me what to do. I'll do it. So so when I got here in 1989 and I started doing adult, I was very vocal just because I was a vocal... Listen, I was the uh, youngest of five kids. Tiny little kid. I wasn't getting shit unless I was loud. So I had to roar really loud. I wasn't going to get anything because my brothers and sisters would take it all. So that kind of just went along with me as I grew up and I became this vocal person that my mom always said to me as a, a young girl, she said, shy Ben's getting out. I'm from Newcastle in England. Yep. Shy Ben's getting out. Shy children won't get anything. If you don't stand at the front of the room and go, oh yeah, I'll take some of that. You think somebody's going to look for you and say, oh, look at that. That poor little person in the back of the room not getting anything. Let's give it to them. Nobody does that. Can Nobody I have does... some more, sir? Please, sir, can <laughs> I have some more? And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to kick you in the nuts. No. But um, so when I got into porn, nobody, nobody, no women in adult <sighs> movies used to talk dirty in films. So when I landed here, they were like, you know, who's this English chick? I was this skinny little platinum blonde chick with this filthy mouth and knew, nobody knew what to do with it. They just knew they liked it. I would have I, I known. She yeah. sounds proper. She's real fucked up. She's hot. All right. So I would have known exactly what to do. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So it, it was, it was funny because it just, nobody did it back then. And, uh, now when you first came to the U S you were what? 20, 23. Uh, well, uh, 1989. Well, I'm 40, what? 48 now. So I don't know. I wasn't going to say it. I don't care. I'm 48. Okay. Can't change that fact. All you have to do is bring up Google and Google me and there's everything about me. So any, ch in, in fact, any chick that lies about her age is, it's really stupid. Because let's face it, I could sit here and go, oh yeah, I'm 32. And in your mind, you're going, why she looks fucking rough for 32. <laughs> or, I could, or I could say, I'm 48 and you could go, you know what? She's holding up pretty good for a 48 year old woman. So why lie about your age? You're not doing yourself any favors unless you're just blessed and you really do look like 22 and you're 48. So you're unless you can afford a lot of growth hormone. Yes. Yeah, but even then, actually, growth hormone, let's be serious about that, doesn't make people look younger. It makes them look leaner. And then sometimes they start to look a little sickly too because they get too lean. So that's the mm. truth. But I can look at somebody on growth. Well, Unless you're a guy who's working out a lot and also juicing and making sure you have adequate nutrition to make sure you don't get too lean. I know how this thing works. <laughs> but for the people that aren't figuring, for the people that aren't really figuring that out that um, intensely, they can get way too lean. And then I'll look at somebody and go, they're on growth, actually. They should eat a little bit more food because now they're starting to look a bit sick. <laughs> so, and I love, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with growth hormone. It's awesome. But just, you know, balance it out so you don't look so bloody sick. Do some other drugs. Eat some more food. <laughs> yeah, know, smoke weed. Do your growth. Yeah. Smoke weed. Eat a lot of shit. God, I'm still somewhere. waiting to get my beach muscles. <laughs> <laughs> you figured you'd be, so, you beat people up for this long and they just wait to get muscles. It's fucking bullshit. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, the best fighters, I mean, none of the best fighters are, are real buff. I mean, come on. I know, I'm kidding. Yeah. The scariest. It slows you down. This, I mean, we were just talking about the scariest guys are not the not the buff guys. My kids sure. class talk shit to me all the time. There's one kid that's bigger than me. He's fucking 12. <laughs> like, damn it. That's your kid? <laughs> no, no, I, I run a kid's program. Oh, like a okay. a martial arts program. So your kid's, okay. Well, my kid's fucking tiny. <laughs> but she does, she does remind me all the time, I'm going to be taller than you one day, daddy. Uh, like, oh, that's well, nice. yeah, duh. <laughs> I hope so. you better be. <laughs> so, so Taylor, so when when you you came to the U.S., you said in '89, uh, and it was you know but between '89 and '94, it's a five year gap before you became a penthouse pet of the month. So, mm -hmm. what were you doing those first five years? Uh, I was on contract um, for the first uh, for the first three years. I was on contract with a company who 
uh, back then was a big deal. It was actually Arrow Film and Video, and once again, they were from New York, because originally all these guys came from New York. They were really, you know, connected, and they came to California to do porn, because we had better locations Girls. than in New Girls, yeah, and better locations. The weather was better. Everything was better than it was in New York, so they came out here to do the porn. Uh, so Arrow Film and Video made a little movie that some people know, might have heard of it, Deep Throat, uh -huh. mm -hmm. most famous Are you telling me you were ever. in Deep Throat? No, I wasn't, but oh, I was contracted with the guy that owned and made Deep Throat, the original guy that did that. So mm -hmm. uh, I was with them for a few years under contract, so I couldn't do a lot other than just what I did with them. And then when I got out of that contract, then I kind of went out on my own for a little bit, and then uh, I did Penthouse. Because I wanted, back in those days, the, your main objective was the more box covers you got on, the bigger star you became, the more money you could demand on the dance circuit. Back in those days, it was a big deal to go on the circuit and yeah. feature at clubs. I mean, a lot, a lot of the girls are still fe they featured. They still do. Yeah. It's not the same game. I got paid, you know, I made... I got paid seventeen thousand dollars. Probably made another ten grand in in tips to feature. So to feature. Wow. For doing you know twenty shows. And You're the doing, girls now are getting like two grand. And you know what? There was guys would line up down the street around the building. It's not an exaggeration. There was no internet. The only way you were going to get to meet a porn star was you better get down to that strip club, pay twenty five bucks or whatever, fifty bucks, whatever you had to pay in the door to get in there, just so you could look at this chick. Who fucks on film because you can't believe that there's a chick, this yeah, decent looking woman that's having sex on film. So, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get off track a little bit, but can you can you imagine or think of any other industry or business in the world that has been more affected by the internet besides music? Than no, than adult. It destroyed adult. It destroyed. Uh, for years, uh, something that um, a lot of people don't know is um, all. I'm the actually my company sold the penthouse, the layout of me. I owned a, a film company. You did say that earlier. I owned my own film company, but I also owned a photo business. So I would photograph m myself. I wouldn't photograph myself, but the you would own the would. photographs of yourself. Yeah, but I would also shoot all the other girls in the business and sell them to Gallery, Score, D Cup. Swank, all the magazines. So I was not just making money being in porn and feature dancing. When I wasn't doing that, I had a photo studio and I was shooting all these other models and selling their uh, layouts. So for the the greatest portion of my career, and I think I was an adult, like 26 years, uh, 24 to 26 years, 20 of those years, I controlled every piece of media that was ever published or put out there on Taylor Wayne. I controlled all of it. It was only later on in the game when it got into the 2000s and things started to change. I had retired for a few years and then I decided to come back. And at this time, this is when Brazzers and Nor uh, Naughty America was huge. Blowing up. And, and, you know, it was obvious that if you wanted to make a comeback or you wanted to, you know, at least get your face out there and say, hey, I'm coming back again for a while, you had to be with Brazzers on Naughty America. So at that point, actually, it was the first time in many, many years that I even let anybody else shoot any content on me. So you actually, but you owned the video of yourself as well as still, photo still photos before that. Yeah. Oh, All the wow. video. I own my own company. So after I got out of my contract, and I, there was, they had about eight girls on contract. And quite frankly, I did I did all the work. I mean, listen, I didn't refuse to work with John, Ron Jeremy. I mean, I think I deserve 10 times more money than everybody else. There were some of the girls were like, I'm not working with Ronnie. And I'm like, all right, I work with Ronnie, who, whatever. So, you know, if there's two guys in the scene, three guys in the scene, all right, I don't care. It's my birthday off. Oh, it's my... Actually, no, they gave me Rocky, Rocco Sofredi for my birthday, so I can't complain. And that's before he was famous in America. <laughs> they brought him over from Italy. Nobody knew who he was. He walked through the door with this beautiful Italian suit on. It was my birthday. Day, and I was like, holy shit, who's this good looking guy? They're like, that's your birthday present. I'm like, all right, porn's not bad. I'm working on my birthday. Could be worse. Um, Could be I, fucking Ron Jeremy. This Italian guy can't speak any fucking English. He's got on this beautiful suit, and I'm going to bang him. I couldn't get his dick in my mouth. It was so big. Well, that's okay. He doesn't need to talk because you do saying, all the talking. My, it was my birthday. In the it scene. was awesome. I was like, I got to stretch my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just soaking in the knowledge. I mean, you, you, you did Why something. was that funny? I know you are very good friends of mine. <laughs> I mean, you are. 
<laughs> yeah, we've been friends a long time. But we have been. I mean, yeah. we have. <laughs> Go ahead, Ian. You were so, you were saying I was saying something. I don't fucking. know. You were soaking in the knowledge. I was soaking in the knowledge from you know from YouTube being such good friends and you being in porn for so long. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's, a, fuck it's, out of it's me. adult. Adult. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Whatever. Porno, porno, I'm kidding. Porno. But there has been massive changes, and you're right. You know, I mean, the internet probably affected our industry um, even more than a lot of other ones. I think. Well, I mean, it's one of those things that I mean, 20 years ago, you probably knew almost every girl and guy who did porn, right? Mm -hmm. And now that'd be impossible because there's thousands and thousands of performers. Yeah. But and there's there's varying levels of porn. There's the my free cam girls, you know, or whatever, and then there's <sighs> the you know, porn stars. I mean, I'm not even. I'm not even counting the cam girls. That doesn't I'm, count. I'm, I'm yeah, just, that's, that's that doesn't even stars. count. I know, I'm, I'm just saying they all sell their Although own. Although they all say they're porn, porn stars. Oh, so it's I, like, oh, such and such is a porn star. Oh, I what hate she that term. It, that, I, that's the most that, abused term there is. I know. It's You're like, not a star. No, she you, did porn. Yeah, She's not a star. You did a webcam show. That doesn't make you a porn star if you did a webcam show. Yeah. So it's ridiculous. We have a bona fide porn star. That's why I'm happy she's here. I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, still in the learning phase about porn. You know, I spent my whole life. Just beating off and beating off and beating off and look at me now. I'm, you know, I get to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. <laughs> you know, I thought I, I taught you better than that growing no, up. No. You don't like anything. There's levels to what indicates whether you're actually, you've made it or not in any industry. So in our industry, there was, you know, if you had been in the cover of magazines, how many movie covers you'd been on. Um, well, that's well, what I was going to ask you about. When you became a penthouse pet, mm. were you like, I made it? Actually, I was the first well-known porn star to ever get on the cover and centerfold of Penthouse <gasps> because back in those days, they didn't let porn stars in Penthouse. You could Why? be You could be in a pictorial having sex, a softcore pictorial, but not as a Penthouse pet. Because, Why is that? Because it was an elite status, just like a Playboy Playmate. Back in, back I don't in, feel like being a playmate nowadays is, is very elite. But then yeah, again, because it's 2016. We're talking about 1994. Yeah, I was on the cover of Penthouse in 1994. There was, there had never been a well-known uh, porn star ever published as a centerfold and on the cover of Penthouse magazine. I was the first. So you consciously were like, man, I fucking did it. This is this, this, this is big. Well, I, I'm, I'm really going places. I wouldn't tell anybody because I didn't believe it was really going to happen. So I remember. It's saying to my my ex at the time, who was uh, my partner and um, uh, my guy and my the, my photographer, my partner, and I said to him, "Shoot some pictures of me and send them into Penthouse. I want to be in Penthouse." And he said, "Well, I can't because they only take pictures from Penthouse photographers." I said, "I don't follow rules. That's a p bunch of shit. Shoot some pictures of me. Send them in. Send them into Penthouse." I mean, that's basically coming back to and my mom saying, "Shy Ben's getting out." I don't care what rules they have. I'm telling you, shoot some bloody pictures. Send them in. So we did. He sent them in, and right away, um, Bob's assistant, Jane, called up and said, who's this girl? We really like her. We want to fly her to New York and have one of our photographers shoot her for Penthouse for the centerfold. And I said, I don't want to go to New York. I want you to shoot the pictures. <laughs> they, and they said to him, no, she has to come to New York and have one of our staff photographers shoot her. And I said, I don't want to go to New York. I want you to shoot them because you're going to shoot them and I'm going to edit to them, edit the pictures, and I'm going to make sure that every picture is a really nice picture because I don't want that picture where one eye is half closed and one's open. Because you see magazines, whether it's Vogue, Vogue, Cosmo, anything, and you go, why did they publish that picture? That they girl's like eye shit. is Wait, half. So, so like for, they picked the worst picture and put it on the bloody cover. So for people who are under 30 years old, Taylor, tell us, how do you edit a photo back in those days? Because you actually had to use film. the negative. You yeah, use the film. Yeah. So it wasn't a negative. It was a positive because it was color. That's what I meant. Sorry. Right. <laughs> but how do you edit that? So you have a light box. You, yep. you get your film processed. You have a light box. You take a loop and you literally look at if you shot a thousand pictures. You go through all of them. And to submit a pictorial back then, you have to submit at least a thousand to fifteen hundred photographs or they wouldn't accept the submission from any magazine. So, so I so look through. That's all pictures of you. All pictures okay. of me. So I would, or whether it was other girls and I was submitting them to a, a, a You know what a loop is? Yeah. Imagine a like a shot glass mm -hmm. backwards. You're yeah. looking through that other picture. Yeah. Yeah. But back then there was no, there, you couldn't just like print out a digital image of a, of a picture and make it big and look at it. You only could look at it through the loop through until the loop. it was actually, until it was actually printed in a magazine, right? Yeah. So they actually could, unless you had, you know, unless your eyes had to be really good because once it's blown up, there could be something that you don't see, but you get used to editing pictures and what you're looking for. Um, so I'd look through, you know, a thousand of these pictures and any ones that were bad pictures, I take, took them out and then they went to penthouse. 
I, I didn't even know it was going to make the cover until Bob uh, once again told the uh, called up the photographer and said, uh, actually, there's no pictures of this girl with clothes on. <laughs> Every single picture, she's naked. I can't put her on the cover. Did, why didn't you put some clothes on the girl? And he was like, oh, yeah, I don't know if I thought about that. So we, went, we had to go back and shoot some pictures of me wearing clothes. And then one of those pictures in that second shoot was the one that made the cover. So I was really happy about that. And I didn't tell anybody until I was driving past the newsstand. And there I was. And I was like, yes. You wanted- and then I... I couldn't text everybody because we didn't have, have like, we didn't have cell phones. <laughs> Actually, I didn't even we didn't have cell phones. They didn't even have those bricks yet. God, so I'm you so just wrote old. letters. So <laughs> I, you wrote everyone a letter. I sent everybody a telegram. Signal fires Morse across Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> smoke Morse, signals. Smoke, Morse code through the porn industry. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, bitches! I got on the cover of Penthouse. <laughs> what do you think about that? And, and to my agent, by the way, fuckhead, raise my rate. I'm on the cover of Penthouse. <laughs> Bam. So I mean, how do you how do you Morse code? Ha 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 ha. <laughs> so was there literally like that day? I mean, did, did your rate for 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 modeling for for video and for uh, featuring literally double triple? Of course, because I was my own business manager, and as far as I was concerned, you could go out and feature on the road and make. Let's just throw out six thousand dollars. You could go. That's get, per night. That's for a week. Okay. Per night, that would, I, I don't would know. be fucking nice. <laughs> uh, I mean, you you could possibly make that in a night once you get all your your Polaroids and your tips and your memorabilia and all that stuff. It, yeah, then it, it was possible. Anyway, so if you're a penthouse pet and that's the only thing you've done is published in magazines and you've been on the cover of Penthouse the Centerfold, you be would be able to go to a club, be the highlight, and get paid six grand. Now, if I'm Taylor Wayne and I'm on a hundred covers, movie covers, right, and then I get penthouse, the way my brain figures that out is I get my, say I get $10,000 for being Taylor Wayne, the porn star, and then I get the other six for being the penthouse pet. And then I put that on top of that and bam, there you have it. Uh, And I remember my agent at the time said, you can't do that. That's ridiculous. I said, of course I can. Don't call me until you have a job for me. So then he called me next week with a job, of course. I mean, that's how I ran my business. I was my own business manager and I always had this voice in my head going, Shy Ben's getting out. <laughs> He's met with your mom. Now tell us. Now I know you've also uh, done a lot of stuff with with the radio before on Spice Radio and mm-hmm. and Playboy Radio. You know, do, do you enjoy being on the radio? Is it something that you want to do more and more? Have you not? Um, have you not been doing it lately? I haven't been doing anything lately. I took took a couple of years off. Your so, sabbatical because uh, I know you were in Tennessee and Florida. Yeah, I lived in Tennessee for a year in Chattanooga. Uh, it's a great place. I enjoyed that there. And then I lived. In- I I could just imagine how well you fit in there. <laughs> Actually, I had my I had my Chattanooga clothes, so I literally bought a whole new wardrobe. I stopped wearing heels, so for that entire year, I wore flat shoes. Sweaters. And and I did. I had chat. I covered everything up. I didn't wear makeup, and I wore my hair different because when I first got there, people just looked at me like I was the devil or something. It was like they looked at me so weird. And then when I started talking, it made it even worse because I was English. I mean, I, they didn't even. What is she? I don't even know what she is. I mean, they have, With they have, the boobs and the accent and the hair and the heels. Oh, my God. They have a hard enough time dealing with, with the Yankees in the North, let alone the British. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I had to like I had to like rework my whole thing to to uh, to be there for a year, but it was great. I really enjoyed that. It was it was nice after spending twenty six years in L A, living my L A life and my life as a porn star, and then going to Chattanooga and kind the of culture shock dialing it down and nice and slow dialing it down. It was I mean, to say the least. Yeah, you know what? Every now and then I think people should do that, though. They they really need to kind of set themselves back to default because it's easy to be in this town and, and get everything handed to you. And, you know, especially if you do well, you're successful, you make a lot of money, people give you things, you get stuff, you know, so you get very spoiled. And that's when people can get caught up in themselves and get caught up in who they are. And then they really believe that they just, they're this person, their persona yep. 24-7 and... They, they just can't be a normal person anymore, and they're actually hard to be around. They lose touch or lose grasp they, of reality. Yeah, because they just become their persona, and it's pretty bad. Because when you meet them, and you know them, and you're talking to them, and they're acting like their persona, you're like, well, what planet are you on? Or the better one is when you meet them in an event, and now they won't even talk to you. Because they're just way too famous. You're like, Big fuck league. you. I just had sex with you last week, and now you don't even fucking know my name. No, you're just walking on by. You don't know me. You're at the porn awards. Nobody says hello to you. 
I swear to God, you go to the porn awards, nobody speaks to uh, one another. They just look at each other like, yeah, uh, I don't know you. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, you do fucking know me. This I is would the ABN Awards. We all know each Sorry other. Sorry, my clothes are on. I would literally, I would literally laugh at everyone. Like, you guys really take yourself that serious? I mean, it's all, it is what it's like. But I think that that's not just uh, the adult industry. That I think yeah, it's entertainment. You know, so every now and then, I think you want to like step out, dial it down, go back to default, and then at least you can, you know, learn how to be a, a, a reasonable human being again. Maybe. Well, <laughs> well speak, speaking of, you know, stepping out and kind of dialing it down and doing some other things, tell us about, I know, you know, there's obviously been a lot of projects you've been involved with that weren't uh, weren't adult oriented. I know, uh, man, you were in a Danzig video back in the day, which everyone- I was in two. Yes. Two Danzig videos. Did you know yeah. that? You knew that? I was that? in Sastinus. I remember seeing the video. I don't know. I didn't, I haven't watched a fucking music yeah. video in, since I, last weekend. I love but. that. Um, that I, I think it's pronounced Sastinus or whatever. I don't know. Really and there was another one. Uh, how the gods. Uh, Show me how the gods kill. Yeah, but I don't even know. He shot the footage for that, but I don't even know if it made it into the cut that made it onto TV or there was a different cut. <coughs> or maybe just Glenn just wanted me to c crawl on top of him and lick him or I mean, something because the footage. Now, <laughs> it's we weird. It's, we definitely, it's in your basement. Now, Glenn, Glenn's, uh, de Glenn's an interesting guy, isn't he? Now, actually. Glenn, there, there's somebody not to say anything bad about anybody, but there's a guy. There's a guy that <laughs> who you, thinks he's pretty important. Yes, got caught up in himself. So years later, I'm at I'm at an event up uh, Sunset Boulevard, and I see that Glenn's there. I'm like, shit, I haven't seen Glenn in years. That's awesome. I'm gonna go over there and say hello to him. So I go over there and I'm like, Glenn, how are you doing? And he just looks at me like he has no clue who I am. I'm like Taylor Wayne. Nothing. And he's still... He's, and then, he's looking at me like wait, wait. nothing. So he literally didn't even say anything or he just said, I don't know? He just sat there and looked at, like, looked at me and I just want to go, come on, you. I mean, don't be a dick. So really, uh, he's somebody that... you know, Notorious like, for that kind of shit. Yeah, he's, he's famous for being a dick. And I grew up loving... Danzig, loving the Misfits. I mean, kids in Southern California. I mean, we're punk rock kids. We yeah. grew up. That was our thing. We loved Danzig. Yeah. And I went to his house. I went to a, I, a couple girls took me to his house uh, one time. There's some weird shit goes on there. There's some weird. There. I mean, stupid shit. I so, mean, he would make the girls put cigarettes out on each other. I mean, it's like yeah. So I don't know what that's got to do I, with sex. I you went. Want, you want to hang out, with Danzig? Come here. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> this is this is probably. This is before I ever met you. I was probably probably 22 years old, 23 years old. I got taken to his house, and he lived up on the other side of Dodger Stadium. I don't know if he still yeah. lives up there. And it looked like really creepy, like the Adams he lives family. In, he lives in, with he, the dead I went to that house. animals. He yeah. lives in a house. So the dude obviously wasn't hugged as a baby. He needs attention. He literally has like a gray house. He, it looks like the Adams family. Yeah. It's yeah. like he wants ever know, this is Glenn Danzig's house. I'm a yeah. weirdo. And he has all these old jaguars. Cut garden, doesn't cut the garden. So he has all these old jaguars. It's like he's purposely trying to look like, I'm so gnarly. I'm so scary. And I went to his house and I went with these weird Asian girls and they were like, uh, one was like a dominate. And I didn't even know. They were like dominator six. You Asian girls? Yeah. yeah. So I went, I went with, <laughs> she rolls I'm her Asian eyes. under here, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so I went there and with these weird dominator girls and I, and I was honestly at the time, I was, I was kind of like, like, whoa, like there's some weird shit going on here. And he was such a dick that it, it took everything in me to not beat him up in his own house. Oh. And it ruined one of my, you know, top three, top five favorite bands or acts. Because like, he's have such you seen a prick. the video of him getting knocked out? Yes, by the bouncer. Uh, it's it's oh, very yeah. famous. So no, it was a guy in another band. Is it was the East Side Kings or something Kings? Glenn Danzig <laughs> says a bunch of shit, shoves a dude, and acts like he's the devil himself. And the guy's fucking not small. He's yeah. a, a big dude, and he yeah. dropped him one punch. Just, yeah. yeah, just slept like a fucking yeah. sack slept. of potatoes. Glenn was Glenn was asleep before he got to the floor. Yeah. yeah, but Glenn was super nice back then when I did those videos. He chased me like. No other. It was just years later because then he was like, yeah, you didn't fuck me back then. Fuck you. <laughs> hey, you know. I was like, dude. I, Weird, I don't know you. <laughs> dude, you hired me to be in your fucking video. You should have hired me to do a porn. Yeah, you should have hired me to fuck you. I mean, let's not get things confused here. <laughs> I, mean, I need to know what it is I'm doing. <laughs> and one thing I wanted to ask you about, uh, tell me about your relationship with the Navy SEALs. Hmm. Oh, um, just I. I'm not even supposed to talk about that because, uh, well. What do you mean? It's I mean, I, I found it, it online. I know, I know. Okay, so one of my good friends has uh, been a Navy SEAL for years. And um, so he, um, well, they flew a flag. 
for Taylor Wayne over Afghanistan uh, Fuck yeah. on full post. America. And then they folded it and sent it to me, and I got the certificate of honor in honor of Taylor Wayne for supporting the troops. So that's pretty But did awesome. you send them like a bunch of photos? Oh, all or? the time, all the time, yeah. And then what he did to me, he. Um, for you or to you? Huh? He, what did he do to you or for you? Uh, uh, no, I never had sex with him. <laughs> So moving on. Um, so I ended up, uh, so his friend wanted to hire me to host uh, the CrossFit Games. But he said. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Well, actually, originally they were actually going to hire Jenna. But at the time, Jenna. Jenna was on heroin. Yeah. So she was like so skinny. And I worked out all the time. I was really back then. I was like really in great shape. I mean, your pecs are, your pecs are very, very built. And um, really Jenna didn't look like she worked out because she was super, like she was super skinny. Rent, so we're like we can't hire Jenna because she doesn't represent CrossFit. So, uh, so my friend said to me, "You, they want you to become certified in CrossFit." to actually host the games. I was like, excuse me? So I went down to San Diego to, and trained with the friggin' Navy SEALs down there and you, got I, certified in CrossFit so I could host the bloody games. They paid me a shitload of money. But I was down there and like all the guys came to watch me while I did it. Of course they did. Because I'm Taylor Wayne. Duh. So not only am I like grunting because I'm like, this is the hardest thing in the world. I got a whole bloody audience of these guys watching me <laughs> while I'm struggling like hell trying to do this thing. And I'm just looking at my friend going, I, I hate you, man. But I got through it and I got certified. I did CrossFit for a while and then I was like, man, it's just too tough. <laughs> I, I mean, it's it. not that I, I couldn't it. do it. It's just I didn't want to do it. It's just too tough. I love yeah, it. I don't want to do it either. Um, do you remember? When, do you remember when we met? Mm -hmm. I met her at a. I met her at a club. I'm trying to think of name, not Ivy, but it was outside. I can't remember the name of that club. Well, because there was so many clubs come and go in Hollywood. It I was a pretty. It was a big one. Yeah, because it was owned by the people that own Geisha and all that. What was yeah. it called again. Anyway, the funny thing was, so I'm in the club, and I said to my my best friend at the time was this gay, guy, gay Stevie, guy, Stevie. Yeah. And I said to Stevie. Go find me a guy that I would think is cute, because I couldn't be bothered. Because I, because I was Taylor Wayne. I mean, yeah. I hadn't went to Tennessee and Florida go, yet. Go fetch me a man. I, yeah, please. I was I hadn't went to Tennessee yet and defaulted. Yeah, I was still <laughs> arrogant. So and I go find me a man that I would find attractive, and he knew the kind of guys that I would like. So he goes, Oh, I found one. And so <laughs> of course the gay guy picked me. Gay guys so, love he, me. He pulled so him over the gay, there by his so, dick. Yeah. So Stevie walks me over, and uh, Eric's in the corner in the VIP section, roped off there. Uh, and I take a look at him. Stevie points him out, and I go, "Yeah, uh, yeah, I like him." So I point at Eric. I just point at him. I go, "You come here." <laughs> and he looks at me, and Eric looks at me. He goes, "No, you come here." <laughs> and then I look at him. I go, "No, no, you right now, come here." And he goes. Look, there's a rope. Why don't you come here? I go, oh, fair enough. you got booze and a rope. I'll come on. You win. <laughs> you win. And that's how we met. I had a gay guy find him for me. <laughs> but it did make a good choice because you were the only man in that club that night I found attractive. So. And we're still friends. And we're still friends. <laughs> I haven't done anything horrible. You haven't. You haven't. That's, That's better than most shocking, guys. Shocking, right? After, I, I mean, from, <laughs> I'm, I'm almost ashamed to say it. I haven't done anything horrible That's yet. That's one thing you never taught me was how to keep women as friends. They all seem to fucking hate me after. Well, Ian, see, I don't, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I don't know if you're capable of keeping them as friends. Um, okay. You win. Why did they hate you? What, what is it that you're because doing he, that? Because, I don't know. He has, because he has a small wiener. Yeah, it's tiny. Oh, like, uh, okay. <laughs> well, Eric's is massive, so you've got to love him forever. I know. I could just repeatedly kick it's you a, in the vagina. It's a lasting, <laughs> lasting impression. No, it's not like a kick in the vagina. Believe me, I know. I've, it's I, like I, a I grew deep, up with him. He's it's seen like it. a deep, luscious massage. I think the first, the first time I saw it was I was probably 12 <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> hey, bro, is this supposed to be there? <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> okay. Actually, that's enough. <laughs> it's, enough about, it's enough about me. Let's talk about, uh, we have some current events going on that we want to talk about. I'd love to have a funny take on some stuff coming up. And uh, one of the things I wanted to touch on was uh, UFC 200 is coming up. It's uh, the biggest UFC to date. Taylor, I know you're you're somewhat of a fight fan. Yeah, I the wanted to go The to return the of the Canadian, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. I, well? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Brock Lesnar's yeah, back. I know. So I was at 199 the other week. Yes. And I wanted to go to 200. I might still go oh, to 200. Oh, you did go. I went to one And you went and saw Bisping. Yes. But he's from Birmingham, right? Uh, he's probably from Manchester. 
Uh, other than me, every other British person's from Manchester, apparently. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Um, but I must admit, I, hit, I, I I got in trouble for this, but I did kind of want Luke to win because Luke's, you thought you think he's cute. Well, he's not, he's not cute. He's fucking really, really cute. So I wanted him to win because he's hot, and then that was the surprise of. Actually, it was it was a lot of surprises that night. There were. We were. It was a damn good night of fights. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of surprises that night. So it was a lot of people a really made money on great, Henderson and Bisping. Fuck yeah, that was crazy, man. Nobody saw that coming, but it was I, awesome. I actually now I'll be honest. If they fought ten times, I'll look you in the eye and tell you that Luke would win eight out of ten. But I had a feeling. That Mike coming in on two weeks' notice, not giving a fuck, and just, you know, he'd already lost to him once. So, he, I mean, he really had nothing to lose. Like, <laughs> zero. Let, let me ask you this, though, because I just noticed that, um, and this, I'm um, not making excuses for him, but he, I just noticed Luke's dad died. His dad died a few days after, a week oh, after. Okay, but that couldn't affect him? Uh, it, was at, it, was, it was after the fight. I know, but his, his dad is dying. I did, I, 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 was I, it a surprise? I, I, I think it was sudden. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it wasn't like an <sighs> ongoing thing. Oh, okay. okay. But you know, it certainly does happen. I mean, one of my one of our uh, good good friends, uh, Jake Shields, who I think you might have met with me before. Jake uh, Jake's father died a week before he fought Jake Ellenberger. Was it even a week? Wow. Days, and yeah. he and he still fought, which is. Just crazy to me. I mean, man. I don't know how you would do. And Jake that. and Jake was close with both. I mean, everyone's close to their parents, of course. But Jake, Jake was really close. To Jake's dad. dad managed him, and they they spoke every day. So it was crazy to me to think that he even wanted to take the fight. I couldn't believe he did it. Well, I mean, his dad is the reason why he became who he was. His dad took him everywhere to you know mm. do all his training, his wrestling, all yeah. that stuff. So that's so, probably why he took the fight in honor of his dad. Maybe I don't know. Maybe his but, dad would but, want but, him to. But he ended up losing the fight, and it was you know it was a, it was an upset loss. He shouldn't yeah. have lost. So. So that's, I think that's kind of devastating, though, for Luke. I mean, obviously, his <laughs> ego, his and his ego was week. completely destroyed by that loss, and then his dad dies. So, <sighs> I mean, you know, well, he I, still got shit on Facebook and Twitter. People were still talking shit to him. I mean, uh, I'm surprised because <laughs> he, he, he showed up to his party, back. and I don't know why. <laughs> he'll, get uh -huh. the, he'll, get, he'll get the belt back. We showed up to the place he was having a party at, and, of course, he, he ended up showing up, and I was like, I wouldn't be here. I mean, I'm sure he got an appearance fee. Oh yeah. Where yeah. was that at? Blind Dragon. I don't even know what that is. What was this? It was after the fight. Yeah. Oh. Taylor's like I can't believe I fucking wasn't there. I was just my guy. <laughs> so how much he's gonna put up with? I'm already sitting there drooling. <laughs> the fight. Hey guys, Eric Apple from American Animals here, and guess what? Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service and you get it right through our website. I'll tell you one example and a great thing I would recommend. Um, I'm a Star Wars fan and the best thing to do is listen to audiobooks, the Star Wars audiobooks. They're great and they have awesome sound effects as well. So download your free audiobook today. Go to audibletrial.com slash animals. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash animals for your free audiobook or check out our website, www.2americananimals. And that's the number two, americananimals.com. Hey guys, this is Eric Apple from American Animals. And wow, I was listening to the Ocho Man behind the eight ball podcast the other day. And I realized this might be one of the funniest fucking shows I've ever heard. You've got to check it out. These guys do two shows a week on the Lineup Media FM network, and I'm listening to all of them now. You can get them on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or OchoMan.com. So UFC 200, uh, we got some. We got some big names. It's the biggest, the biggest UFC fight. They're expecting it to be one of the three biggest uh, sellers of pay per view ever. Um, we got. Takanori Gomi versus Jim Miller. Great fight at uh, 155 pounds. Gomi, the fireball kid, one of my favorites of all time. Diego Sanchez versus Joe Lozon. Which is going to be amazing. Which is going to be amazing. Of course, Diego Sanchez is the original winner of the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, Gegard Mousasi and Derek Brunson. And we got Sage Northcutt coming back. It's, it, now, th he better win this fight or it's going to be his aura is going to be gone. Yeah, he's asked out. And Sage Northcutt is like this really good looking 19-year-old uh, kid from Texas who was like He's literally, he's a living Ken doll. Yeah, he's a freak. He's a living Ken doll. He, he's retardedly buff. He is the nicest kid you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Literally, it's like, sir, no, sir, Mr., Mrs. In his interviews and stuff, his after-fight interviews are 
the thing, they're gold. And the, one of his fights, he actually asked everyone, he said, everybody, when you have the chance, can you please go online and Google John 316? Thank you very much. Yeah. He, and he just smiled. And it was like, <laughs> what the fuck is this kid on? Jesus loves me. Yeah, he no, he literally, yeah. he, he literally <laughs> talked like that during the fight. I have he's, to Google him. He's right. a child. He, he, he <clears throat> just seems like every single time there's a camera at him, he's just in a deer in headlights. Sage Northcutt is his name, Taylor. So uh, after that, we have Rafael Asuncion taking on former 135 pound champion DJ, TJ Dillashaw. Then we have Johnny Hendricks and Kelvin Gastelum, uh, Kat Zingano, boys. Juliana Pena. And then we move up to the big boys, Travis, Vown and, Travis Brown and Kane Velasquez. And Kane Velasquez is the former heavyweight champion. And Travis is a six foot eight uh, Hawaiian dude that's. Yeah, and Travis, Travis is a really tough dude. Uh, Kane is is the favorite here, but I mean, you know, Travis, you never know what Travis is going to show up. You know, I wouldn't be shocked if he if he put, put some hands on yeah. Kane. But I mean, Kane's wrestling is, and he's just, he's just a grinder. His, his his attack is insane. So moving on, we have the uh, 145 pound interim belt, which we always have he's an bad interim hair. belt. He for needs some fucking hair. For, you're supposed to be a male model. You should have a better haircut than that, son. You don't. I mean, can, can you tell that he's like the nicest looking, nicest kid from Texas? You have to watch one of some of his inter- interviews. They're funny. So Jose Aldo taking on Frankie Edgar. What do you think about that, Ian? For the interim title, I think it's awesome. Um, <laughs> Edgar is on a tear, and I, and I love Aldo. Aldo's one of my favorite fighters of all time. Yeah. But Frankie is on; he's on a mission, and I think he's going to be the the what is it third ever two time or two division champion. So Aldo beat him before. Yep, in a, cl- in a good, good close fight. It, well, it, so it so there's a difference though. A clo- it was close, but you knew Aldo won. Oh, yeah, it wasn't close like I don't know who won. It no, could no, no. could have been either Aldo, guy. Aldo won. You knew Aldo won, but yeah. it was close. But I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, who knows what's going to happen after Aldo getting knocked out in his last fight against Connor and the first punch. And all this drug testing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say it, but no mas bomba. I'm sorry, Brazil. So after that, we have Misha Tate defending her belt against Amanda Nunez. And Misha Tate was the girl who was able to uh, take out Holly Holm, the girl oh, who I beat. Know. Oh, fight. okay. That was, okay. A, that was a smart fight, man. I watched every single fight. You know, I just fight. remembered. I just remembered Taylor came to one of my fights. Yes, I did. Which one? At Chumash Casino, my oh, first fight on Showtime. I was hoping you were so going to say ago. in uh, <laughs> Total Combat in Mexico. In Mexico? No. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't come to any of those. I love Eric so much. I go all the way to Mexico to watch him fight. No, I well, that, was hey, closer than that. Ch- I, it, Chumash, <laughs> Chumash is a really nice place. Yeah. yeah. It's a nice. Have you, have you, have you been there? Mm-hmm. Uh, Shane fought on that card with yeah. me, our friend Shane Del Rosario. Stevie drove me, by the way. <laughs> The cake guy. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh, my God. Back then, Stevie drove me everywhere. He was That's my good. driver. Great, great Stevie. I was still in my before Chattanooga phase you, where I didn't even drive myself. Tail- <laughs> Home, <laughs> Jamie. Home. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm wondering in my head how many times Stevie drove Taylor to wherever I was. <laughs> Several times. Every time, because I was always drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what did you ever notice? Two little eyes staring in your door. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure he would have oh, loved it. Oh, he was probably listening and whacking. Oh, God. I'm sure. He had the hearts for, for Eric, so. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so gonna, let's go on. And the, and, now shut. <laughs> um, and the co-main event is none other than the WWE superstar and former UFC heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar, who was taking on Mark Hunt. And that is, I mean, it's huge for the sport. <sighs> I mean, Brock Lesnar, you know, he supposedly has the most amount of pay-per-views ever sold. If if he wins, it's good for the sport. If he loses, it's good for the sport. It's good for the sport, and even more than McGregor. Yeah, well, yeah, he's yeah. he's still he number sold, one. He, he sold the most wow. pay per views. Yeah, he, and he's he outsold by not by much, by a couple couple hundred thousand, I think. Oh, so wow. so Brock Lesnar, do you know he, he and when he was in college, uh, he was the the NCAA champion at heavyweight, mm-hmm. and he's a, an absolute Viking killer who just rapes the horses and rides off on the women. He's, he's got tons of titles for different stuff, doesn't he? Uh well the NCAA is, 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 wrestling. is, is the big them. is the yeah. biggest one as far as like as far as real athletics. And and you know I say real athletics, professional wrestling, I don't know how many professional res- wrestlers you know. I imagine you know some. Those guys are are tremendous athletes and they're really, really tough because those guys go through they they have so many injuries and so mm-hmm. much they have to deal with that another athlete do- can't imagine. And they they're on the road, especially when they're when they're starting out as wrestlers. They're on the road so much in the in the beginning, especially that you have to be tough and tenacious and really, really have a lot of nerve to be able to just deal with that and compete. One of the not to name drop, but fuck them. Uh, that club <coughs> that I met you, I was there one night with my girlfriend, and she was dating this guy. Who was like a kind of 
I don't want to say an amateur wrestler because it was wrestling. They were getting paid, but it was on the low levels anyway. So we're in there and he goes, oh, my God, that guy there is really well-known wrestler. I don't watch wrestling, so I don't know. I said, who, what guy were? That guy there, Mars. The, you know, that Mike Mars. Uh-huh. And I goes, oh, that guy's cute. So I looked at him, I said, you, come here. <laughs> and I went home, banged him. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Taylor's just out there recruiting boys at Hollywood back uh, in the day. Oh, that's right. I'm from Newcastle. So what we do in England. We don't rent porn. We just, you just say, point? oh, look, you're cute. You there. Come here. I want to fuck you. Come with me. Come uh, with me. Yeah, just come with me. <laughs> okay, I'll come with you. If that's the way Fine, hot lady. With whatever, so, whatever you say. I mean, I didn't know. I, I mean, mean, it worked. Well, at least, I put, at least I put up a fight. How did you put up a fight? Oh, you said I was like, no, you here. come here. You come talk to me. Actually, I'm Eric Apple. It was, actually wasn't really a fight. It was a smart move because you had the booze in your... I, did, I was just standing in the middle of the bloody club. Well, I with, was playing hard to get. Oh, well, were you? All right. It worked very well, didn't it? <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> so, so, Ian, uh, do you think that uh, Brock Lesnar has a chance against Mark Hunt? Because I do. Okay. He's a 300-pound fucking giant white gorilla. And for those people who don't know, uh, heavyweight in MMA is 265 pounds. Brock Lesnar has to cut weight to make heavyweight, he which almost massive. nobody has to do. So he he's probably coming in the cage at 280. So I have, I have small hands, like actual size small. I, I fight in the smallest weight class in the UFC. He has a, a 5XL. So literally it's the size of my head or both my hands. Yeah. I don't know. It, Bricks. So if if he if he can do that ugly bull rush and, and shoot a double and get marked down, he can't. I mean, it, it'll ha- it could happen. But most likely, Mark's going to defend one or two takedowns and fucking send us just a heat seeker to his face. He pu- he's the one guy that can punch you in the face and then not watch you fall. But he just knows yeah. that, oh, I split your jaw in half and you're fucking sleeping. I don't know. I mean, I think way too many people believe that. I mean, I think a lot of people are writing off Brock. And I'm like, you guys are high. You can't do that. Because Mark Hunt, bless his heart. And I, I love the guy. I'm a fan. You know, we know which one Mark Hunt is, the big Samoan heavyweight. I'm sure you recognize him. Yeah. Um, total, has, da- total dad bod. I don't even bod, know the Clash song. I mean, I'll know it if I see geez, it. So, <laughs> so, so you call yourself English. A, lot, a lot of people are writing off Brock. Years of too much drinking. I just say uh, yes. Yeah. A so lot of people recall. are writing off Brock, but I, I really think that, I mean, he's an NCAA champion. You can never, can shoot you can never a, do that. I mean, who really is going to be able to easily stop a double? Now, Cain Velasquez stopped a couple of takedowns from him, but Cain Velasquez was an NCAA champion or close to it, right? Yes. Mark Hunt... Although, look, he's learned some grappling and he's learned some jujitsu attacks and defense. But, I mean, as you know, when it comes to someone who has a lifetime of wrestling, yeah. no no couple years, couple months, five years is going to matter. If if Brock shoots a clean double leg, I don't think Mark can even can stop it if Brock gets one good shot. Yeah, I mean, that's we're going to find out. No, yeah, how, long has, how long has his training camp been? How long have... Has this whole thing been a listen, secret? I'm listen, sure it's been a long, long, Brock, long thing. Listen, Brock joked when they announced the fight, oh, I just started training today. Listen, yeah, no. Brock Lesnar is a smart dude. Yes. He's made millions and millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm. in the WWE. He was a he was a, a champion in the UFC. He's not stupid. On, on, be- on his fourth fight, right? <laughs> yeah. Third or fourth fight became a fucking world champion. Third or fourth fight, he became the world champion. I mean, the dude is not dumb. I guarantee you that he is physically and mentally prepared and he was getting ready for this fight months or weeks, at least weeks, you know, three, four weeks before they announced it. And then last but not least, we have the light heavyweight championship, uh, John Jones coming back and taking on Daniel Cormier. That's the fight I want. Yes. And you do? Yeah. As much as I, as much as, okay, so somehow, and I know I know why, I, I, I like, I love Daniel. Daniel's an amazing guy. John's a shit bag, whatever. Um, <laughs> But somehow, everyone, no one likes Daniel anymore because he's so bitter about the whole situation. Mm. And I want to tell him, like, dude, you got to stop being so fucking bitter about this because it's making you look bad. And John's John's the bad guy. Let him be the bad guy because, you know, you, he it just seems to fuck him up m- too much mentally. And then he just starts kind of being a dick, too. And it's like, dude, just, you just keep being you. Don't play into fucking John's game. Cause, yeah. I mean, yeah, you, you have to be pretty much be blowing it. If you make John Jones the good guy, people boo Daniel now and they cheer John. That's weird. Yeah, it's it's, pr- it's a fucking weird situation and it's whatever. Nice. At least John's playing the bad guy role. He's not quoting God and trying to, you know, do I mean, the, stupid shit that like he used to. That was the only thing I had a problem with. 
Yeah, oh, big time. I, if you want to be the bad guy, cool. You're you're a horrible person. Go for it. That's fine. I don't give a shit. I want to watch you fight and beat people up. That's all I care about. And you and you are really fucking good at it. So that's all that matters. I mean, as much as I can't stand him as a person, he yeah. is the fucking best dude. Yeah, I, I think just just God given talent, you're the guy. I think hard work and best fighter on the planet, Demetrius. But I mean, John's a freak. So who do you call to win? John. Oh, John, easily. You know, I. I I think Daniel Carmay is the, is the second best light heavyweight, but he's not going to be John. And I don't think, I, I mean, I think they can fight five, six, seven times. He can all rematches he want. I don't think he's ever going to get it. And, and now John's got muscles. Sort of well, but you know what? I, I, I think he's going to have less muscles than last time because it didn't look so good last time. No, I, I think he'll definitely slim up. But you know, it's a little more weight for Daniel to carry because he was making Daniel carry him the whole time. And you bust your dog with somebody like that. That sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> Carrying an extra 10, 20 pounds. That's a lot. <laughs> So let's talk about some other current events, other things going on in the world. Uh, I wanted to tell you guys about um, one of Pablo Escobar's uh, hitman from Colombia. He spent over 20 years in jail, and he was released this week. And this is super interesting. He has been convicted of over 300 murders personally. This man personally killed 300 people, and he's been released, and he is now a YouTube star. Oh, really? What's he doing on YouTube? So murder. he's murder. <laughs> so he's talking about politics and, and, and all kinds of uh oh, he has like a talk show on YouTube. As Latin happenings, I guess. I mean, how does someone you know do three hundred kills and get out? Well, he, he probably read a lot of books. I think they have books in Colombia. Um and he uh, fuck, I don't know. That's that's He found God. Yeah. He, God but I, no, and something. I'm talk I'm talking about how does it, how does the judicial system let that man out of jail? We just live in a different world now. There's a lot well, of things slide now. You know, maybe it's Colombia. I did to say much more. <laughs> South America, a lot of shit slides down there. <laughs> and he also, uh, he was also convicted of actually uh, plotting to kill the president. He was one of the people who was trying to kill the president for Pablo Escobar, but he never was able to do it. Well, <laughs> again, well, you know, Colombia. In Eng at least in England, when somebody plotted to do that guy Fawkes, at least we have a celebration every year and burn his body on a on a big bonfire. That's right. Well, and, and guy Fawkes night. Yeah, and that's. I don't even. That's I the mean, guys with the anonymous mask. That's where that that's where that like mask comes so from, right? So stupid. Like every year they have bonfire night, huge big, and they make a guy out of stuffed clothes and throw it on, and that's uh, Guy Fawkes. And because the guy plotted to blow up Parliament yeah. like a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. We'll use any reason to get drunk in England. Party. Any reason to have a good time. Well, and did you hear about the, uh, speaking of getting drunk and, and all that kind of stuff, did you hear about the, the, the soccer hooligans, the English and the Russians? No, what happened? So apparently 200 Russians dressed up in, in English soccer jerseys and dressed up as Englishmen and went to the English side of the stadium. I guess the, you know, they have this big tournament going on in France yes. right now. The Euro they Cup went to the whatever. English side of the stadium and attacked the British fans with bats, chains, clubs, hospitalized like 50 people. Oh, wow. Some of them are, are severely and are, they're going to be damaged for a lifetime, have brain damage and, and real issues. They dressed up like in costume to sneak in and went and attacked them. Fucking soccer. <laughs> Soccer's I mean, honestly, nuts. soccer, people that watch, they're, they're crazy. So many people die at those matches. I just don't get it. It's like a religion. So when people say to me, who do you support? I go, are you, are you going to ask me that question? Newcastle United. I was born in Newcastle. You think I'm going to try and go back home, visit my family, and all of a sudden I support Chelsea? I'm not going to get stoned <laughs> well, to explain, death going I mean, back into my own yeah. city. So explain to a lot of people, I mean, the term hooligan, which is a very common word now in all society and all the world, actually originated from soccer fans, correct? Probably. Yes. I mean, I I like drunk history as much as anybody. They should do have, have you ever been to England? <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, it's a, it's a just soccer, football being brought up. I mean, this shit gets wild. When I went over there, it was World Cup. Fucking oh, geez. a long time ago. I and I went over with Chuck and everybody. And it was a mess. And none of us watched football, so yeah. soccer. It's oh, a religion course. over there. It's yeah. a really a religion. It's the, ridiculous. I mean, I, I knew they were screwed up as soon as I saw the outdoor uh, pissers in like town where you just piss like in front of everybody. A trough. Yeah, they have like a trough for guys to just walk up oh. and piss. I was Wonderful. like, 
You know what they're really angry about is nobody scores a fucking goal. What a waste of time watching a game where they could go for an hour and you'll be lucky if somebody gets one. Listen, the only thing you have to do in your life is kick a bloody ball around and you can't get it in the net and score (laughs) more than one goal. You're fucking terrible at this game. (laughs) Honestly, you need to like abolish soccer if you don't know how to get the bloody ball in the net past the goalie. Or give them weapons. It'd be a lot more interesting. Well, don't, don't, you know, tempt them. Don't tempt them. But uh, terrible. Oh, I never liked soccer. So boring. Is your accent, is it Cockney? Do they call it a Cockney accent? Oh, no, it's not a Cockney A Cockney accent is different? Yeah. Cockney would be Dutton and Diving, down in the West End. Know what I mean, love? So Cockney That's is Cockney. people down in London. Yeah, Cockney the, the is people in London. Southern fairies and northern monkeys? Or how northern does it go? monkeys, fucking southern fairies. Actually, so that's right, because northerners are... As we'd say in England, hard as nails. Because actually up north, it's colder for a start. It's minus weather. Also, everybody up north where I'm from, I come from a coal mining uh, district. So everybody was steel workers and coal miners. And everybody's just, they're brawlers. They're all like rugby players, you know, just short, stocky, brawling men. There's only a few things you do up in Newcastle because there's not a lot of money up north. So you (coughs) fuck, fight, and uh, with it, not in that order, wait a minute, you get drunk. Then you have a fight, and you go home and get fucked. That's it. That's what you do. Sold. I mean, that's that's basically I mean, all you do just, there. Just so you know, Ian and I are champions at all three of those. Oh, things. good. <laughs> you do well in England. Then, we would you? We, we would be popular. I mean, you know, it worked out in this country. <laughs> so, so actually, there is a really big class divide between the north and the south in England, and they're very. Uh, uh, they're very aggressive about it. So when I moved down to London from the north, people wouldn't even talk to me because I had a northern accent. So I had to rework the way I spoke so that they wouldn't know I was from Newcastle. And so I changed the way I spoke. They can still slightly, they're like, are you kind of from up north? But they're not sure. Is Newcastle close to Birmingham? It's closer to Birmingham than it is London, but it's actually, it's underneath Scotland. But Birmingham is a very, very Birmingham. working class it's filthy in Coal, Birmingham. Coal, iron, filthy. factories, right? It's awful. Birmingham, and Leicester, Manchester, all that I, middle of the country. Can is I ask you a cheesy question? Dirty. Do you watch do you watch Peaky Blinders? What is it? Peaky Blinders. Oh, I don't even know what that is. I it's start a, I started to watch a couple and I, I haven't gone back to it. What is that? That's a Peaky shame. Blinders is a is a BBC show uh-huh. that is also available on Netflix that is fast becoming one of the biggest shows on Netflix. They just had their third season and it's really? fucking amazing. What's it about? It's about a gang in Birmingham. Uh-huh. Uh, a bunch of soldiers came back from World War One, and they formed uh, a gang, basically mm-hmm. running numbers and gambling and all kinds of stuff. And it's oh, a great wow. show. All right, but well, Birmingham's a pretty dirty place. Newcastle's not much nicer than. But that, that you, you guys in the north sound so much more proper than they do in the south. We really don't. I'm. Uh, I'm opposite, not, I, actually. I, I don't yeah. sound like. I don't sound like the people from. They're the considered north. hicks. I, no, no, I've my accent's completely different than anybody from where I'm from. You couldn't understand a word I was saying. So we're Geordie. We're called Geordies up north. And um, I like how they have names for uh, everything. I'm, I'm trying to think. Uh, it's hard for me to sometimes be able to say something. Uh, so if I instead of saying yes, I'd say we uh, man. You want to go and do for a pint of beer now? Okay. Uh, that me. That's me asking if you want to go and have a drink. So yeah, it's pint, like a of beer. I heard it's it. like a whole different language, and they speak really fast, and and everything's its own slang. So, uh, Geordie's definitely not the way. That's not what I speak anymore. Thank God you didn't talk like that in your films, because it would have fucking ruined it. <laughs> no. You would have had no career. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You'd have no career. <laughs> Put a fucking muzzle on that bitch. Send her back. Deport her. <laughs> All right. I mean, that is true. Actually, English guys would say to me. Why in your movies do you not sound English anymore? You sound American when you're having sex. I'm like, I don't sound American. I just sound like I'm having sex. <laughs> I mean, you know, but you just want to smooth everything out and make it sound sexy. Listen, don't let them critique you because I'm okay with it. You don't want to sound Irish, right? I mean, that would be well, horrible. You don't sound Irish. <laughs> I mean, actually, up north, it starts to get similar to Irish because Irish and Scottish are very similar. And Newcastle's right underneath Scotland, so people say to me all the time, "Are, are you Irish?" So it's uh, so it's and pretty so it's pretty cold there. It's freezing, freezing. It's bit of, it's bone cold. So it's like Chicago, New York, bone cold, where it gets in your bones. Yeah. And I remember leaving Newcastle, and when I first came to California, I said, 
Oh man, this is the place. I want to stay forever. <laughs> you thought you, you, you thought you were on vacation. I was like, my ribs don't hurt anymore because it's so cold there. Your ribs hurt so bad because it's so freaking cold. And I was like, I'm not going back up there. I'm staying in California. Well, I'm glad you're here for this segment of the show because this is a segment we do every week. This is called the best worst advice ever. So who better than to give the best worst advice ever than Ian and myself? And I'm glad you're here to join in. And uh, for our listeners, you can hit us up on social media. You can send a direct message to our Twitter, our Facebook, or our Instagram. Remember, it's at two American animals two. On, on all of our social media. The letter two. <laughs> no, the number two to at two American animals or just type in American animals. You'll find us. Taylor, by the way, do you want to plug any of your social media while you're on the show? Uh, my Twitter is TaylorWayne69. It's my favorite <laughs> number. Um, and then my Facebook. I don't even go on Facebook anymore. It's just Do you have a fan page on there? Yeah. If I someone know. types in T-A-Y-L-O-R-W-A-N-E, they will find your fan page? They should do. Yeah, they should. Now, your and Instagram then, is private. Or did you start a new one? No, it's just, I, I just never went on there. I, I never got into it. Uh, that's too boring. I can't be bothered with that shit. Okay. I mean, okay. honestly, I went from when I went from MySpace to Facebook, I, I fought that and I was like, all right, I'll do the Facebook. And then when I went to Twitter, I fought that for a while. And then I was like, oh, I like Twitter better than Facebook, actually. And then Instagram came along and went, You're all right, right time out, time out. I'm spending way, I want to spend more time <laughs> in the real world. Because I want to spend more time in the real world with people than in the other world where I'm just talking to people on social media. So they can still talk to me on Twitter. I, I tweet all the time or, or I answer tweets all the time. And, and how, my website, taylorwayne.com. How busy is your Twitter? Is it just blowing up all day? Yeah, all the time, except I just I just don't go on it that often Is anymore. there ever a time where you don't have tons of, of, of comments and notifications and direct messages? Oh, I mean... There's tons I haven't answered. I don't answer any of them anymore. And my Facebook probably has thousands and thousands of... Uh, so I apologize for anybody that's ever sent me a message on any of my social media. You know, it just comes to... After 26 years, you just... Come on. You, you just like time out. It's not man. working. I mean, you already tweeted me. Why are you trying to private message me? I saw the <laughs> fucking tweet. I mean, honest, honestly, you're not getting any further ahead with the private message unless you're Luke. <laughs> <laughs> and I have had private message, a private message. So whatever, if maybe, but if you're just a regular person, unless you look like Luke, then you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are friends with Luke, so maybe we'll try to connect you. No, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! So um, again, our segment is called "Best Worst Advice Ever." Uh, this week, we're gonna go to a question from Laura. And, you know, we have some pretty funny questions in the past, and this one's a good one as well. Laura says that her boyfriend keeps on pressuring her to have threesomes in, involved in the relationship. Now, she's not very comfortable with it. She doesn't know if she should just do it to appease him or if she should say no and how she should go. And if she did say no, how would she go about that? Well, you say no. <laughs> or you just shut the fuck well, up and do it because it's a good time. I mean, you know. And is it threesomes with another man, another woman? Who, uh, yeah, just who's fucking him? She, did, she didn't say, but I'm assuming it's a girl with a guy. I think she would probably clarify that. So, Did you ever see that TV, uh, that TV made for TV movie called, uh, I think it was uh, called like Monster. It was Mike Binder made it. I feel and like it I was, have. It was such a great movie because, so the guy keeps bugging his wife all the time for a threesome. And it just goes on and on and on. Eventually, she agrees to it. So, of course, she says, but I've got to pick the woman. She's got to be attracted to the woman, and he just goes with it. Well, what happens is she picks the woman, and apparently they like each other too much. So the women just keep having sex. They don't even fucking care he's there anymore. <laughs> and so his, like, fantasy turns into the worst nightmare because now he's not getting any sex because, basically, she just wants to bang other women now. Well, let's be – I mean, let's be, <laughs> let's be real about this situation. Unless you are someone who, for example, does adult – or you're somebody who's extremely mature and comfortable with yourself, even if the woman is out there picking another girl to take home to her boyfriend, mm -hmm. it very rarely works out. Is, is that what you would say as well, Ian? It's going to fuck up the relationship, especially if you guys fell in love before all this. Now, if you meet someone and the first night you sleep together, you have a threesome or some sort of group sex, mm -hmm. then maybe, you know, it happens. You tell, maybe, maybe it'll happen again. I'm just saying. But, you know, I just um, think you guys, do all your nasty shit and everything that you've thought about doing it, do it with somebody you're not in love with. Yes, exactly. Just go pick strangers up, do some shit, get that shit out of you. And and then when so, you fall in love, you're 
in a relationship, a okay. partnership with that person. Okay, so, right? so so you're saying that you think if, if you're truly in a, in a committed, serious relationship, that that, that kind of stuff is not going to help, not going to work out. It's possible it will. I, because I, I think it can, but very little, a very small percentage of the time. I mean, it really depends on the individual people because, I mean, people generally are insecure. doesn't matter who you are. And even if you're not insecure, there's always that one person that comes along that the chemistry is different. And you notice the chemistry is different. Why in the fuck is she talking to him that way? She didn't talk to the other guy or the other girl, you know. You meet somebody, chemistry is different, and suddenly now you feel insecure because you're like, they're talking to them different. They're looking at them different. They made they eye actually, contact. They actually really do like this person on a different level. So in You in, feel that right away when you're part if you're with somebody and they truly do have a, a connection. Yeah with somebody else, you're going to be insecure because this is your partner. You're supposed to have a, a, you know, a union together. Yeah. So, so you would agree a very small percentage of the time it works. Yeah. Sometimes it works. So in my experience, I've, I mean, obviously this may or may not have happened in my life a time or two, but <laughs> it's, I've even had those experiences where my girlfriend was like, I want to, I want to bring a girl home. And of course, if, if you really are, you know, you can't be like too into it because you're going to piss her off, right? So like, well, yeah, I guess yeah, whatever. <laughs> if you really want, I guess, I guess you could twist my arm, right? And even in those situations where I've had a girlfriend bring another girl into the picture, a girl that I've never met in my life and didn't meet, didn't pick. She picked her. She brought her home. The next day, the next week, it was like, why'd you kiss her more than me? Why were you looking her in the eye when you had sex with her? Why did you do this? And it's like, what? Huh? This this is your friend. I don't even know this person. How could you be mad about this? This is your idea. Still, yeah. this still ends up happening like that most of the time, I think. And I think it takes a a very special person or a very mature person or someone who's like worked an adult who, who doesn't get insecure about sex to to yeah. ever deal with it. Yeah, but even people in adult get insecure. Have you ever been in a scene where you got where you were jealous of a, of, of the guy in the scene fucking the other other girl more or too much? You were like, man, I want that. Come back. Nope, never. My job when I'm on camera, it turns on, and I'm there to do the best job possible. Nothing else crosses my mind other than fucking as hard as I can fuck. I mean, literally, that's that's <laughs> what's in my head. It's almost like going in the gym and wanting to have like just like the best workout possible. You go in there, you go, you know, you do and this, it is a workout. It's on for a start too. There's people still watching movies I made 20 years ago, seeing them for the first time now, going, "Oh, I saw that movie you made." But oh, that one day I was jealous <laughs> and not feeling. I was lazy that day, and that's the movie they saw. No, there's no off day. Every single time that camera turns on, you turn on because every single time has to be your best time. That's why you get in three Hall of Fames, motherfucker. <laughs> three Hall of Fames. Every it's day is game it's day. Call work ethic. Every day is I'm game day. I'm the fucking Peyton Manning of porn over here. Bring him, bring him a game oh face. <laughs> here we go. That's how you become a fucking champion right there. That is, though. Honestly, I mean, when you go into your job and you're being paid and you have people expecting a certain, especially when you've already kind of got to a level where this is what's expected of you. Now you have to beat yourself every single time. You're in a competition. Ian's with, beating himself every time, trust yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I, you're every in a time. competition with yourself every time to try and do better than the last time. Sometimes you stress yourself out. You go, fuck, that one was really, oh, fuck, how can I do that? I did 10 somersaults on that guy's cock. I don't know how I'm going to do that again. I mean, you honestly have to outdo yourself every time. And if you don't, you don't get in three Hall of Fames. How how often would you, you get forgotten? How often would you finish a scene or see a scene after you did it and go, "Holy shit, I did that!" Or how did I do that? That fit in there. Oh. Uh, I never watched my own movies ever. Never. No. Never watched one of your own scenes. No. Or okay, what about after you shot it? You were like, "Man, I can't believe I did that." I remember uh, one scene I did for Brazzers where I did some weird. F I was like doing an. Uh, 69, upside down 69, like I'm going down, sucking his yep. dick, and I'm up on his boat. And then I like flipped over and landed on his cock. I was like, I don't know, what the fuck? What am I on, fucking You mean drugs? you spun? <laughs> I like did some spin move and then just jumped on his dick and then started fucking him. I was like, well, that's a pretty good move. I don't know how I did that. 
like some kind of somersault thing. You probably could mimic right off his face, right on his dick. You probably like, could mimic it again if you tried. It just never. it just worked that one time. I would probably <laughs> broke my neck. I don't know how. I didn't we don't break want my that. Neck. No. I actually might have a broken neck, and I just don't know it. <laughs> you know, I, you know, it's, it's, it's not an it's unheard of thing. I had a broken neck and didn't know it until I got an X-ray, and weeks later they're like, "Oh, when did you break your neck?" Weird. I was like, like, my neck's broken. <laughs> Yeah. Yay. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, actually you would end up, you, the time that I would forget or I didn't know how I would do something was when I danced live on stage. That was a whole other ball game too because now you've got a room full of, and you guys know this, you fight. You know, you've got, say, 200, 300, 500,000 people in the room screaming your name and you come out there and it's, it's, it puts you in a really weird place because you're like, holy shit, I better do something really fucking good. <laughs> uh, there's all these, all these people are screaming my name. I got to do something really impressive right now. So after I would get back home after a week of being on the road dancing, uh, my trainer, my personal trainer at the time was like, listen, just let me know if your guy is beating you up. I'll fucking, I'll do him in. I will. <laughs> I said, no, I'm a dancer. I dance. Right. Just give me the word. <laughs> because I was covered in black and blue marks all over from just going ballistic. Yeah, the stage is not a joke. No, but I would re I would the run pole down too. I would run down the stage, skid down the stage and then like dive off into the crowd. Stage, I would do like stage dives. I would. I would do stupid things. And I used to dance to Led Zeppelin and all this stuff that would like really get you go and then just dive into the crowd and I mean, I was so drunk too. It was such a good oh, time. Yeah. I mean, I was drunk. You couldn't do that without being drunk. I mean, honestly, everybody in those clubs is drunk. And I tried it for a while. I tried it for about six months where I said, okay, I'm doing I'm all sober. these shows sober. I'm going to do them sober and see if anything's different. I mean, the shows were the same, but it was different in my head. I was like, oh, it's it's not as fun when I'm sober up here. I mean, it's like really a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get back. Let's get back to the question. So, okay. so what would you know? We already heard your answer. Yeah, uh, Taylor. You know, what is your answer to Laura? So, if, if her boyfriend's pressuring her, do you think it's a good idea for her just to go along with it once, once or twice to appease him, or should she tell him no? And how how does she tell him that she's not into it? I mean, the truth of the matter is, you've really got to know what you can live with and what you prepared as the outcome. So. If she, you'd have to think it through and say, am I prepared to deal with the outcome? Is that he might be more attracted to the other girl or you might just feel you're more attracted to the other girl. You have to decide your comfort level. So I can't really say to, I can't really give yeah. good advice whether she should say yay or nay because it really comes down to how secure you are with yourself and how much you love the guy, honestly. <laughs> Honestly, it really, it does. Because if you really like him, you got to do it. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> Honestly, it's there's, true. There's no middle ground. You either, you so either can't love him or you have to love him too much. It's one of the that, That's kind of, that's really kind of it. You either don't give a shit about him. I mean, I don't care if he fucks somebody else. I'm sick of his dick anyway. Or you just really love him. You say, you know, we're in a relationship together. We're best friends. That's what we really are. We're two people who are sharing this journey together. And I really don't have the right to deny you of anything because you're my best friend. You make me laugh. I, I really like being around you. I just wish more girls in my life had this attitude. <laughs> <laughs> so th then you have to decide, you know, do you let your best friend experience something that they really want to experience? And if you truly were their best friend, you would let them experience it. I mean, I really want my girlfriend to experience things other girls with. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm a giver. <laughs> Remember, check us out at Two American Animals, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, like us, and you have to click on follow, guys. You can't just look yeah, at yeah. it. You got to follow it. Exactly. You have to follow our, our pages, please. Eric Apple, Ian McCall, hanging out with you here, coming to you from the studios in Hollywood, California. Man, Taylor was a good time. She was a crack up. She is. She's awesome, and she knows what she's doing. She's been in the business before, and it's just a good time to, to have. Obviously, you have personal stories with her, but she is she is uh, a throwback. I mean, she's a, an OG. She's really funny. She's uh, she's cute. She, and she doesn't mind say, speaking her mind, no. does she? Just, when you started doing porn in '89, was it? Something I mean, like that. That's yeah. a f you, you've you've seen some shit, and you're pretty damn cool in my book. She has seen some shit. I guarantee. <laughs> I guarantee. And uh, this is the part of the show where we normally get into a celebrity call out. And Ian and I were just talking about it during the song right now during the break. And uh, you know, we don't really feel like going on to a new celebrity, so we're just going to continue on the Glenn Danzig thing. Dan or Glenn, um, you know, 
I, he I, lives I, here in LA. Yeah. I know people see him all the time, deal with him all the time. The guy's just amazing. It's it hurts my feelings so much because I fucking loved the misfits yeah, and dancing. We grew up on that. That's what we were raised on. And then to find out that, you know, Hollywood is taking its toll and made him a douchebag, that sucks. But, you know, that's life. Now have you ever seen like have you ever seen like footage of their old shows like in the early eighties and mid eighties, like in Orange County and Of course. And they, the they, Cuckoo's they, Nest and all those places. When they had the hair all down their face and they were just kids and they were just fucked up as could be. Before they got huge when he was skinny. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Were, I mean, they were awesome. Yeah. How do you best. how do you how do you go from being an eighties, I don't know, punk rock? This is before goth even existed. So it was basically a rock slash punk rock singer. How do you go from that to thinking you're too fucking cool for the world? I mean, how do you think you're too cool for Taylor Wayne? That's that's the question. Who I mean, does that? How can you not say what's up to Taylor Wayne? She was she starred in your fucking video. Yeah, don't act like you don't know who she is. You know, I mean, because <laughs> you, no one's that cool. That's what people need to realize. No one's that fucking cool in life. And sometimes you just need to get beat up. I mean, do you think it's do you think it's small man complex? Is it Napoleon complex? Is it because he literally acts like that, or do you think it's because he's semi famous? Because he's semi famous, and and, he, and it's always he was. Do you think cool. the height thing contributes to it? I, maybe it could. Some small people are really, really angry and pissed off. And I know I was at some point. I mean, I'm kind of mellowed out now because I got yeah. beat up on the you know national TV a couple times. But hey, <laughs> that'll that'll take you on a notch or two. I, I feel tougher after I get beat up. Yeah, I don't feel yeah. that tough after I win. I feel tough when I get beat up because I took a beating. Took your licks. Yeah, I, 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 I honestly feel tougher after after a fight that was hard or I lost. Yeah, I, I, understandable. I mean, it's. You have to get that weird introspective, you know. We had to, there's so much well, to and then about. there's the cheesy, like, well, I learned so much more from a loss than from a win. Yeah. But it's true. To, to an extent, yes. Uh, but it's just, it's always a cop out. I don't know. Winning is the only thing that should matter to fighters or to athletes in general. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying anybody should want to have a learning experience. I know. <laughs> but I mean, it, I mean, it really is in my mind. I feel like I learned so much more about myself and fighting when I lost. Well, yeah, because you, 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 when you win, you don't think about anything. You're like, oh, fuck, I won. That's it. Of course I won. But then when you lose, <laughs> then when you lose, you're like, well, this happened. And then you think about it and you and you learn or you think you learned at least afterwards, right? It, it makes you think about and compartmentalize everything more and break it all down. If you just smoke some guy, then, then you know, whatever. That's, 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 what, that's what I train to do. You just celebrate and you think you won and that was it. Yep. Exactly. So do you think, uh, you think Glenn Danzig just hasn't lost enough in life? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. He's he's on too much of a winning streak, I guess. Well, you know, and he's it. been through so many bands as band yeah. members, so I mean, that's that's a red flag. I mean, if you've gone through that many dudes in Misfits, Sam Hain, and Danzig, you know the guy must be a red flag, and he must be a dickhead because nobody wants to stay in a band with him. And when do you hear anything besides "oh, he's fat, old, and a dick" now? Like you don't you don't ever hear anything good about the guy. So I don't know what to say. I mean, I would love to hang out with him and and have a good experience, but. Well, it's like we talked about earlier. I mean, I went to his house and he literally has the Adams family house. And it's like, of course, bro, you're in this evil, semi satanic punk rock band. You don't need to pretend you're in the Adams family. You are the fucking Adams family, bro. <laughs> you don't need to act like it. And he has like this like wrought iron gates and all these old Jaguars and like 20 cats. And it's like, come on. <laughs> They're all you black. You don't need to try this hard. Out of all people trying to be tough and cool, you're the last one who has to try. Stop it. <laughs> the whole world's afraid of you. All the parents are afraid of you. They don't want their kids listening to you. Just fucking chill out for a second. Yeah. You trade in your hearse for, for a new Mercedes. I mean, fine. Mother was the coolest fucking song when we were little. Still is. It's still, I mean, yeah, it still is cool. It's still, it, I mean, I still love it. You're right. It is just a letdown. I know where you're going with it. It's a letdown to know that, you know, one of our childhood heroes is a dick. So. All right. Well, let's change gears. Let's uh, let's not harp on Glenn Dad's anymore because we do love his music. And if he hears about this, sorry that you're an asshole, Glenn. I, and we still love your music. Your music still s somewhat overpowers your asshole yes. personality. Rock on, Glenn. Now, I want to talk about baby stealing alligators. That's right. So in Florida, uh, a couple had their two-year-old baby. They were at uh, Disney World, which is much, much bigger than Disneyland. Yes. They have multiple lakes 
and they have like a, a little Polynesian little area. Oh, a wildlife reserve, don't they? Or, or, yeah, uh, or that, but this is actually right there at the park. Yeah. Now, there were signs posted everywhere. It said, do not go in the water. Their two-year-old baby was in the water. I don't know how far. It could have been very far, but an alligator. In the water or on the land? No, he was, he was, he was in the water a little bit. They should put those fucking parents in the water. Now, he wasn't swimming, I don't think, but he was, you know, standing in ankle deep, knee deep water, something like that. And the alligator snatched him up. Both parents went after the alligator. Both parents uh, sustained some sort of minor injuries. I don't, I don't know the extent of it. And that baby's gone. But did you die? Yeah, that baby, that baby's not coming back. And I mean, first of all, it's a ter- I mean, it's a, it's a horrible thing. I mean, and we're not, we're not trying to make a joke out of it whatsoever. But, but I mean, you're a parent. What the fuck do you do? There's nothing. I mean, what are you gonna do? I'm. I'm killing that alligator. Yeah, you're, I mean, you're certainly you're certainly gonna you know put put your mind over matter and go for it. Yeah. But it, I mean, have you ever seen an alligator up close in real life, other than a zoo? No, well, no. Actually, I saw them when I was when I fought in Florida, and I walked around and saw them. And I was like, oh, cool, an alligator. I'm fucking out of here. How big was it? Six feet, maybe. Okay. So, and uh, for those who maybe, haven't maybe been, been around feet. alligators, uh, an alligator is. Pretty much, and I mean, you you can if you guys want to scientifically check it and fucking email me, you can. An alligator is the closest living relative to a fucking dinosaur, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm pretty sure it's accurate. And they, they look like dinosaurs. They make weird sounds. They breathe loud, and they make these intimidating noises with their body. And the way they move, it is fucking sketchy. And they can they like vibrate in the water. It's fucking it's crazy. Yeah. It's weird. And when I was probably 24 25 years old and i was hosting freestyle motocross shows all over the country we had some shows in savannah georgia right on the border with florida and we had like three days off before our next show and there's like 15 freestyle motocross riders and me so obviously and this is like back when freestyle motocross was just going off and it was just we did crazy shit all summer on the road and the first thing we did we had a day off was go where's there a wildlife park Let's go wrestle alligators. Let's go fucking play with alligators. <laughs> so we we went we went to uh, look for some this park. We paid whatever to get in. We drove the RV or motorhome in there, and we saw alligators. And there's signs everywhere: "Do not feed the alligators." Which the first thing we said was, "Great, let's go buy some food for the alligators." <laughs> so we went and bought a bunch of raw chicken, and if I remember correctly, cantaloupe or some kind of melon. I don't know why we thought it'd be cool to see an alligator bite a melon, have a pop in it, you know, burst its mouth, whatever. We thought that was funny. We went and bought, so we went and bought a bunch of meat and we found some, the alligators and we were playing with these alligators. We were putting food in front of them and then running away. <laughs> and we thought this was hilarious. And then, you know, a couple of us uh, would throw food out from the alligator and as it would go up to grab the food, we'd run by and touch its tail and run by, keep going. And, <laughs> and, and this is a seven eight foot alligator not i mean not a 10 12 footer but it was long it was bigger than me it could definitely kill you and looking back at that that was one of the that's, that's a top 10 stupid thing in my life touching an alley a, a, a wild alligator not the zoo there's nobody there to help you if it, if it bit you there's no there's no there's no hospital there's nowhere to take you he's gonna take your hand yeah or at least and they're scary, intimidating things. So, I mean, man, what a horrible thing for these people. I mean, what's going to happen to the park? I mean, I mean, they have, so they can't really do anything about it because all over Florida, especially Ontario. It's nature. Or, I'm sorry, Orlando, the Everglades, there's there's alligators everywhere. There's nothing they can do about it. There's big snakes and alligators. Isn't there crocodiles and pythons down there now too? No. Well, I've heard that they've found a very few crocodiles, but those are ones that have been released. That's what I'm saying. Just like, there, the- just like there's some boa, like gigantic uh, pythons or boa constrictors, anacondas, something like that, that are from normally from South America, but they've been, people bought them as pets. They got too big. They don't know what to do with them, so they take them out and release them in the Everglades, and they've survived. And a few of them have maybe found each other and bred. There's not very many. And they're fucking giant. Yeah, So, but but a crocodile belongs is, is much... No, a, a crocodile, especially in. like a Nile crocodile yeah. or an Australian crocodile, is Huge. twice as big, if gigantic. not more than twice as big than an average alligator. They get up to 22, 23 feet, thousands and thousands of pounds. I don't know if you ever saw those ones that were caught in the Philippines years ago. Yes. The biggest ones supposedly yeah. ever caught. Jesus I mean, Christ. those are, they look like a whale. I, I, you know, when I went to Australia, I got to saw them, or saw the, saw, see, them. see them. And, uh, wow. Yeah. That, that doesn't even, doesn't even look real. You walk up next to you and you're like, that's not a real creature. Yeah. It's literally 20 feet long and it weighs 4,000 pounds or whatever. And it, it, <laughs> it's just, it's laying there. I mean, what would you, what would you do? Did, did, if you saw that thing coming at you in the water or a river or anywhere. 
Well, it's not like a bear. You can't. I mean, and me, me, me trying to fight a bear off, going boogie, 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 trying to act big is not going to work. So I mean, I don't even know if I would. I, I would probably freeze and shit my pants before I died. Hopefully, it doesn't like the way my shit smells and it would let me go. The alligator. <laughs> I think that I could somehow finagle around and ride it. You know, at least tell some. At least tell you know you or some of my other friends that were stupid enough to be there with me <laughs> figured it out that I'm riding this motherfucker. Now the bear. It's a little harder to ride, so I don't know if I could ride a bear. But it's just like the guy because you can't to, fit your legs around. around exactly, it. You can't and, really clamp in. Yeah. The, the, now, see if you if you look up the guy that tried to kill himself. I don't know where it was. I think in the Middle East somewhere. He tried to jump in, tried to commit suicide via lion. Oh yeah. And next thing you know, he has no clothes on, and he's around the lion's neck. Like, oh, bad idea. I don't want to die. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what they did with the lion, he, but he pushed out. It, it, you can't even kill yourself, right? Well, and it, and then it goes us to the uh, to the kid that fell in the enclosure with the gorilla, and that was sad because now look, it's a look. Everyone's freaking out. Oh my god, they killed a poor gorilla. Blah blah blah. Well, look, it, it it's sad. It is, but I mean, there's a kid in there. But to be honest, I don't think the gorilla was really going to hurt that kid very much. No, it wasn't going to hurt the kid. They just knew if they shot it anywhere than the he- other than the head, it's it going to freak out. It had have a, a, some sort of knee jerk reaction and would have slammed that kid into a pancake, or that 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 could have happened. So why not take it out and then you know feed the parents to an alligator because the parents are fucking idiots. Now that story's dropped out. Yeah, how does your kid fall in the gorilla enclosure at the zoo? What is wrong with you people? Exactly. I mean, see, that just takes us back to the whole thing where I really. 100% believe that you should have to pass an IQ test to breed in this country. Uh, it, it's shocking sometimes to think that I have a kid and that, <laughs> and that she's alive and well and will never fall into an alligator's mouth or a gorilla's fucking hands or anything wrong. Okay, because... <laughs> Better knock on wood. Yeah, I'm a good parent. Granted, I did have a uh, have a weird dream last night that she fell off a cliff, but and then I was going to go jump after and then I woke up and was like... <gasps> That was a bad dream. Oh boy! Well, you, who, who lets kids play on the edge of a cliff with ropes? Do you have those falling dreams? You know, there's there's a we'll look it up and talk about it next week because we're just about out of time here. But there is actually a scientific reason for that. There's a there's a there's a reasoning for that. Hmm. Something that's going on with your body, your brain that causes you to have the sensation of falling in your dream in your dream or when you're sleeping. Because I know everyone has probably woken up at least once, like reaching out for something because they feel like they're falling. <laughs> elbowing whoever's next to you in the face. Yeah, yeah, it happens. Yeah, see, I just uh, now I'm now I'm gonna be stuck in a wormhole forever, looking up why I've have freaking weird dreams of falling off that, cliffs with my. Kid. That's why after you and I would have sex, I wouldn't sleep with him because I'm afraid he's gonna hit me in the face. Yeah. Well, and with that, that's all the time we have here <laughs> on American yeah. Animals. Shoots. Make sure you check out Taylor Wayne at Taylor Wayne. Support her on Twitter because that's pretty much all she uses. That's T A Y L O R W A N E. And myself, Eric Bad Apple, and it is Uncle Creepy MMA. Yes, sir. Uncle Creepy MMA. On I got everything. correct. And of course, our show at Two American Animals. Like and follow us. Thank you for checking us out. We will be back next week. We have some really, really big guests lined up for the next couple of weeks. So we're excited to, it's gonna uh, be awesome. to get to that. We will see you later. This podcast was a presentation of lightupmedia.fm.